Welcome to this Easter Sunday. Hope you're doing great. Let's all celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing the night alive. All my failures I tried. It was my turn till I met you. Till I met you. And he called my name. Let's sing it out. And you called my name. And I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know Cause the old man knew, hallelujah The old man knew Jesus when I met you Oh what a glorious And you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into glorious day and you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day oh your glorious day come on wherever we are let's clap our hands Let's all sing this out with everything we got. I needed a rescue, my sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. But you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. My eyes are open Cause when you called my name Let's shout it out I ran out of that grave You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day glorious day it is God that you would raise from the dead and you would conquer death and all sin upon the earth we thank you for your sacrifice we know because you live we can now live forevermore yes Jesus Save the rest. 
Your power does the impossible. Come on, where you are right now, just lift up a praise. Lift up a thankful song to him. Because he rose from the dead. He went to the cross for me. Oh, he went to the cross to die. Now we can live forevermore. is risen from the grave hallelujah christ is risen from the grave and no and all throughout eternity our song will be the same hallelujah christ is risen from the grave hallelujah come on let it be a cry this morning Christ is risen from the grave, hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it out like we believe it. Christ is risen from the grave. And because he rose, we can sing it. And all throughout eternity, our song will be the same, hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. believe that you rose. We believe your power still reigns. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us today. The same power that went to hell and took down the keys lives in us today. Oh. That's our celebration today. That's our message today. We sing to a God that is alive. Our Jesus, our King, our Lord, our Savior. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Praise God. The book of Psalms 118 verse 23 and verse 24 says the following, which is a prophetic few verses. It says, this was the Lord's doing it is marvelous in our eyes and then it says this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it this is the day today this is the day that the lord has made that the lord orchestrated therefore we will rejoice and be glad in it i hope you're rejoicing today i hope that you're glad today because this day, Resurrection Sunday, 2,000 years ago, Jesus rose from the dead. He came out of the grave. He is alive. You know that many commentators, many uh, scholars, commentaries, when they talk about this verse, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, that verse we, we quoted, you know, just talking about today is a great day. You know, tomorrow, we, today is a great day. But that verse really has to do with when, they, when you study it in the context and you look at the prophetic writing, it has to do literally with the day that Jesus rose again. It has to do literally with the day that Jesus came out of the grave and declaring this day, the day that Jesus that Jesus rose from the dead is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord orchestrated that day. The Lord planned that day. You know that, that the devil thought he had Jesus finished. 
He thought Jesus was gone. He thought Jesus was dead and buried forever. What did he did not know is that God Almighty had something up his sleeve. God Almighty had a plan that he had orchestrated from eternity. And that plan hit the devil square in the, in the middle of his eyes. It surprised him. It was the plan of resurrection. God's power coming on the scene of death and, and causing Jesus to come alive again. He rose from the dead. It's the day that the Lord God has made. He made it. He planned it. He orchestrated it. Therefore, because He lives, we must celebrate. Because He lives, we then can rejoice and be glad again. Because of that day 2,000 years ago, because of, because of that day that Jesus rose again, that's the day that changes everything. That's the day that gives us hope. That's the day that redeems us. That's the day that saved us. That's the day that changes, changes our faith, that, that makes our faith so different to every other so-called faith. Jesus is alive. Every other philosopher, every other uh, religious leader, every other so-called God died and is in the grave. But our God, hallelujah, our God, our Lord, our Saviour, He's not in the grave. He is alive. He is alive. He is in heaven at the right hand of the Father. He conquered death because it was the day that the Lord had made. Therefore, we can rejoice today and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So come on, do a little bit of rejoicing right there where you are. Come on, get a little bit glad today. Get a bit excited today because your Jesus, my Jesus, is alive and He conquered the death. He conquered the grave. Amen. And we worship a God that is alive. Our worship is not in vain. So celebrate today. It's a day of celebration. It's a day of rejoicing. Amen and amen. Come on, sing that one more time. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Let's sing it to the Lord. Sing it with conviction. Hallelujah. Sing it with, with a knowledge Christ that I sing is, is true. It's true. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ, Christ is risen, is risen from, from the grave. And all through and all throughout eternity, our song will be the same. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen from the grave. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you could just clap right there where you are. If we were at church right now in the building, we would just tell people to clap to the Lord. We would tell people to say hallelujah. We would tell you to just shout glory to God. I would say shout Jesus is alive. God is good. Amen. But you can do it right there where you are. You can say amen. Amen. I believe that. I believe that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My King, my Lord is alive. Amen. Praise God. Well, welcome this morning to Power Church Resurrection Sunday service coming to you live over Facebook. And we are also coming to you live. We have many that have gathered in our Zoom, on our Zoom platform. And so we want to welcome you this morning. We pray that you sense the presence of God that we sense right here in this place that you sense that presence, and that presence would go right there where you are, and that you could be blessed today by what we are doing in this place. So welcome, welcome today to Power Church service this Sunday morning. Just want to quickly give you a few uh, directions and, and a bit of, bit of in instruction with regards to how you can find information about our church. You can, you can go to our platform on, on social media, Facebook, our website, You'll be able to find all the information that you need with regards to what the church is doing right this moment and what the church is doing uh, during this time of restrictions. Uh, pop over there and have a look and you'll be able to know and uh, find out what we are doing and that way you can stay engaged and, and stay connected with uh, what the church has been doing. On Tuesday nights, we're doing a Bible study on our, uh, on, at 7 o'clock and we're coming also live on, on our Power Tuesday page and also over Zoom and we've been having great services we've been get, getting a lot of people coming and watching and engaging with us and incidentally if you would like to be part of our Tuesday night Bible study our live Bible study it's a more personal Bible study more in depth 
into the Word of God. Inbox us, send us a message, and we'll send you an invitation to be able to uh, be able to come onto our Power Tuesday uh, Facebook page, and because it's an invitation only, so we we will invite you, and you can accept that, and you can be connected with us on Facebook and also on Zoom. We got the code there on our Facebook. You can connect. You know, we had people last week asking us how can I engage with the Facebook Live Tuesday night, and we gave them the. The, the instructions and, and they came on and we had a great time Tuesday night. Many people are, are adding to the Tuesday night Bible study and uh, we'd really love you to be a part of it. So inbox us and we'll send you the information of how you can connect with us on Tuesday nights and uh, that way you'll be blessed, be refreshed and be encouraged by the Word of God. And a few other things, Power Pantry, we're blessing people throughout the city. We've got brothers driving around, dropping off uh, goods and foods and vouchers and money and those that, that we feel that would, would benefit from that kind of help and uh, it's just been such a great blessing to be able to do that thank you to everyone that has supported this and is giving and we, we're also sending people to go and pick up things and then we distribute it's just a great ministry that the church is doing right now thank you very much for helping us with that also this morning uh, I want to encourage you to, to give for those of you that part of the church to give your tithes and your offering you can you can find the information to do that on on the screen you can go to our website and you can click the giving link and it'll take you to to two ways that you can give there's an app there that you need to register and and there's, there's a there's a way that you can give via that app and there's also a way you can give uh, directly into the church bank account you got the bsb and account numbers there that you need to make that happen we want to thank all of you that have been faithful to God, faithful to His Word and faithful to the church throughout this time that we've been out of the building. You've been so faithful. Uh, we, we thank you. We're so appreciative for your generosity and for your faithfulness. You know, the, the church is not the building. And just because we're not in the building does not mean the church is still not functioning. The church is still functioning. The church is still going forward. And therefore, we must continue to be faithful in the area of our giving. You know, we've had people even come to our home here and give us envelopes, their tithes and their offerings. And, and obviously then we go in and we deposit it into the church account. You know, we're so, that, that blesses us that people say, you know what, we might not be in the building, but the church is still going forward. And we don't give because there's a building that we go to. We give because God's Word says to give. We give because this is our church. We give because we want to be faithful to God whether in the building or outside of the building. So thank you very much. I want to encourage you this morning to, to go onto that platform to give and give your tithes and your offerings and honour the Lord. We believe in giving. We believe in sowing into the kingdom. But we also believe in reaping that God blesses us when we do this. So as we sing this next song, uh, you've got a few minutes there. You can give. Go on your phone right now and, and follow the, the prompts and give your tithes and your offering. And uh, also you can worship with this song. And I'm going to come back and preach the Word of God for a few minutes this morning, believing that you will be blessed today. Amen. Let's sing to the Lord and thank you again for your generosity. Amen. Let's all sing this together. Are you hurting and broken within? the weight of your sin Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself Do you thirst for a drink of the well Jesus is calling Oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and
bring us sorrows Bring us sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Resurrection Sunday we can worship you that we can praise you and we know that as we worship Jesus as we lift up Jesus that the Holy Spirit comes on the scene and I pray that the Holy Spirit has gone through to wherever people might be watching us this morning to wherever people might be connected with us and ministering and moving and operating Lord Father bringing encouragement to the discouraged bringing hope to those that have lost hope, bringing, Lord, direction to those that are confused, bringing healing to the sick today. Today, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would do a work in the life of your people. And we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory as we minister the word this morning, Lord, that your word would go forth anointed, unhindered, uninterrupted. That if your word will find good ground, that your word will, will produce in the life of those that will hear it today. That one word from you can change everything. And so we open up our hearts and we say, Lord, speak to us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. And Amen. Right there where you are, you can say, Amen. And Amen. Thank you, guys. That's wonderful time of worship. I hope you've been able to worship with us right there where you are. Uh, I can't hear you, but I'm sure you've been singing. I'm sure you've been able to lift up your worship to God right there where you are and sense His presence. We sense His presence right here in this place. And my prayer is that you sense His presence right there where you are today in Jesus' name. So we're going to get right into the Word of God. If we can open our Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 24. And we're going to read from verse 1 through to verse 12. Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 1 through to verse 12, and believing that God's Word will minister to you today. I, I encourage you to engage for the next few minutes as I preach the Word that, so that you can fully get the message today. And I believe that God's Word is going to do something powerful in your life today. Luke chapter 24 verse 1 to verse 7 says the following. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, 
but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise from the dead. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all the things to the eleven and to all the rest. Verse 10. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed marveling. Notice that word, marveling to himself at what had happened. Amen to God's word this morning. The, the, the passage of scripture that is relating the moment that the disciples of Jesus, the women that followed Jesus, found out and discovered that the tomb was empty, that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, that he had risen from the dead. That a miracle had happened. Jesus had come out of the grave and he was alive. Some of the greatest words that we will ever hear, that we will ever read in God's word. He is risen. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is alive. Jesus is alive. Something happened in that tomb. Something glorious and miraculous happened in that tomb that I believe will give us a glimpse to the power of God and will help us to understand that that power that rose Jesus from the dead is available to you and I today. You see, the resurrection of Jesus is not just a, an account that is historical and is not relevant for us today. It is as relevant today as it was back then. What, what happened in that tomb, the miracle that happened in that tomb, is a miracle that can happen today. The same power that rose him from the dead is the same power that is available to us today to raise up anything that is dead. The Apostle Paul... In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, wrote the following. Talking about the crucifixion of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. He says the following. That I may know Him. Talking about Jesus. Talking about what Jesus did on the cross. That I may know Him. That I may experience Him and experience His suffering on the cross. And then he said something very interesting, that I may know the power of his resurrection. Now, now let that sink into your spirit, what, what the Apostle Paul was writing, what he was praying, what was uh, on the inside of him, a desire that he had. It wasn't just something that he threw out there, you know, carelessly or, or, or ignorantly. He, he threw that threw it out knowing that this power was available to him. This power was a power that he could experience. He said that I may know, that I may experience, that I, that I, may, that I may live the power of his resurrection. That word power there is the word dunamis. And the word dunamis Translated into English is the word force, talking about God's force. It talks about mir miraculous power. Miraculous power. In other words, a power that performs miracles. The word dunamis there translated is great power, the greatest power at God's disposal. It talks about power as opposed to just mere talk. It's not just talk, but power. 
uh, evidence, manifestation, a power that gives evidence, a power that, that gives a manifestation of what is spoken. And he talks about the, the greatest power is the power to drive out death. The power to drive out death. The greatest enemy of man, the greatest fear of man is death. Man will never be able to uh, come up with some design to avoid death or to have man live forever. It is appointed unto man to die once and then after this the judgment. Death is, is an enemy of, of man. And the power of resurrection, dunamis, is literally the power to drive out death. To drive out all that which separates us from God. To drive out all that which is evil, death. Power that I may know, the Apostle Paul was saying, that I may know this power, that I may experience this power that, that is miraculous, that I may experience the force of God, that, that, I may, that I may walk in that power, that I may live in that power, that my ministry would be one not of just talk but of power. I, I want to know the power the power of the resurrection. Now, the word resurrection, literally in the, in the Greek is anastasis, and literally means, this is what happened in the tomb. There, there, was, there was a power of resurrection in the tomb. So, there was a, a, an amazing dynamic, something powerful happened in that tomb. It was the power Dunamis, the, the force of God, the miraculous power of God was released on the earth into that tomb and it caused resurrection. It caused life to come. It caused death to go. Resurrection, the power of resurrection. This power is available to us today. What's the word resurrection translated into English is the word to raise again or to bring back to life. It's the word recovery. The power to recover what is lost. It is the power to come back from the grave and or death. Another word for resurrection is to stand up. To stand up. To be raised again. To be raised from the dead. That I may know the power that causes that causes life to come. That I may know the power, the, the wonder-working, miraculous power that causes recovery to come. Amen. See, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There are many that believe that the power of God cease, has ceased. There are many that believe that the power of God is something historical. There are many that believe that the power of God is something we read only functioning in the life of Jesus while he was on this earth. But, but I want to I release this word over your life today that the power of resurrection is available to you and I today. The power, the wonder working, the force, the miraculous power of God, the great power of God is available to, to raise up that which is down, to bring to life that which is dead, to cause recovery to come to the child of God. There is a power available to you and I today. It's called the power of resurrection. It is the greatest power of God. It is the greatest power available on the, in the universe, on this earth, the power of resurrection. And I want to say that today, if there's ever a time that we need this power, if there's ever a time that we need the supernatural, the miraculous power of God, if there's ever a time that we need this power of resurrection, it is today. There, 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 is, there is a need for recovery. There is a need for life. There is a need for, for people to, to, to stand up again. There, there is a need for people to come back to life. And that is available to us through the power of of resurrection. We have relied today on the power of man. 
We have relied today on the power of intellect. We have relied today on the power of education, on the power of, of money, on, on, on the power of, of, you know, of the army, of our own, of the power of man-made things. And, and you know, for, for a long time, man has sort of said to God, we can do it without you. We can, we can do it without you because, see, man wants to be able to uh, reason everything. Man wants to be able to uh, be in control of, er- of everything. We, we want to be able to, you know, one plus one is two. Uh, we want to be able to know how did it happen. And, and, and the power of God, I mean, how, how did Jesus come out of the grave? How, how did a man that was dead for three days come back to life? All we can say is that the power of God, the miraculous force of God entered that tomb. And I, I don't know what happened, the dynamics of, of life coming into his body, life coming into his cells, life resurrection power going into the cells of his body into the organs of his body into his brain into the on the skin the, the, what happened in that tomb what happened in that place that caused life to come to a dead corpse the resurrection power and the apostle paul had a had a, a sense that that this There's something about the power of resurrection that I want to know about. There's something about the power of the resurrection that I want to to experience in my life. There's something about this power of resurrection that I want to function in my ministry. Church, we need the power of God to be manifested in our lives again. We need the power of God in our churches. We need the power of God in our ministries. We need this power of resurrection once again to come into our lives, to come into our churches, to come into this world like never before. And on the day that Jesus rose again, The Apostle Paul knew that something happened in this chapter that I read to you. The Apostle Paul had a glimpse, obviously by by the Holy Spirit leading him and teaching him. He he got a revelation that something, this could not have just happened by coincidence. The resurrection of Jesus could not have been been a reality just, just by by coincidence, as I said before. It could not just it could not have just happened. There was something greater. There was something more powerful at play. And it was the power, dunamis, the miraculous power of God. The power of resurrection, which is the greatest power. The power that brings life where there is death. And on this day, we see the power of resurrection functioning. And we get some glimpses into, into what we can what we can grab onto and experience in our life today. Because maybe today there's some things in your life that are dead. There's some things in your life that are lying in a tomb. There are some things in your life that, that have, have been robbed from you. And, and you're trying this and you're going to that place and you're endeavoring to, to put some things, some methods into play and, and, you're, and you're trying and, you, and, and, and nothing works. Well, I want to tell you that today there is the power of resurrection is available for you. Number one, when the women went to the, to the tomb, they, they found in verse 2 it says, that the stone was rolled away from the tomb. The stone was rolled away from the tomb. Number one, the resurrection power of God, the power of God rolled away the stone that was at the entrance of the tomb. Angels came, the power of God came, and that stone that could not have been moved by any man, was moved by the power of God. 
if, if we read in Matthew chapter 27, verse 63 to, to verse 64, it says, Sir, we remember while he was still alive that the deceiver said, After three days I will rise, therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Now, n- notice that. Notice that. The, the guards and, and, and these men came to Pilate and said, Pilate, you know, we heard him while he was on the earth. He said that he would, he would rise again from the dead after the third day. So we, com- we asked that, that you would command that a, that a stone would secure the tomb. Now, notice that word secure. That something would secure that tomb. Verse 65, Pilate said to them, you have a guard, go your way, make it secure. Secure that tomb. (laughs) No one coming out, no one going in. Put a heavy stone, look what he says here, and make it secure as you know how. So they went and they made the tomb secure. Again, the word secure, three times. Secure, sealing it with a stone and setting a guard to watch over it. Now notice that the first thing is the stone was rolled away. The stone was put on the tomb of Jesus so that in their minds that so that Jesus wouldn't come out and so that no one would go in to take out his body. The the stone was representative of a of a of a blockage something blocking the tomb. The stone is representative of something that is, that is an obstacle to secure, to secure and to, to, let, to, to be a hindrance. And, the, and yet the power of resurrection, the power of God came and removed the stone. The first thing that the power of God did was remove the stone. This is something that you and I can, can grab a hold of today. What, what do you have in, in, the, in the tomb that the enemy has tried to secure it in so that it would not live? Relationships, your vision, your purpose, your finances, your ministry. And the devil has tried to secure in, has tried to put an obstacle in your path so that, so that you would not fulfill your purpose, so that you would not fulfill your destiny, so that you would not fulfill your calling, so that you would not attain the dreams that God has deposited on the inside of you. And he, he's done something to try to kill to try to destroy, to try to steal from you. And, he, and, he, and he's tried to, to secure it in with an obstacle. He's tried to secure it in with, with something that, that is impeding the manifestation of your miracle. See, Jesus had said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come alive on the third day. I'm going to rise from the dead. The, the enemy had heard that. The, his 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 enemies, those that opposed him, heard that. So they said, we're, gonna, we're not going to allow that to happen. We're going we're gonna to try to impede that to ha- from happening. We're going we're gonna to put a blockage to that. See, the, the enemy has heard what, what has been promised to you. The enemy has heard what you have prophesied. The enemy has heard what you are believing for. Sometimes, you know, the, the enemy can see, not even just he is, he can see your potential. He can see your greatness. He can see your family, your marriage. He, he can see the, the destiny and the purpose. And, and, and he, can, he can obviously see the anointing on your life. So he tries to do something to kill it. He tries to do something to, to put it into a tomb. He tries to, he tries to do something to, to seal it off and to secure it in. You know, and, and, and to try to rob it away from you. To try to steal it away from you. To try to kill and to destroy that which God has put on your life. And then he, he tries to put obstacles. But the resurrection power of God comes 
to roll away that obstacle, to roll away that stone, to roll away that barrier that is stopping your promise, stopping your prayers from coming through. The resurrection power of God will cause that which God has spoken into your life to come to pass. The stone was rolled away. It was impossible for that stone to be rolled away. It was impossible for for that to happen with human efforts. But the resurrection power of God came on the scene. And the first thing that it did through the angels, through the angelic host, was roll away the stone. First thing, roll away the stone. I want to declare today that the stone that has been blocking your blessing, the obstacle that has been blocking your purpose, the obstacle that has been stopping you from fulfilling and from attaining, from running this race with joy and with purpose and with faith, I'm declaring today that that stone, by the power of God's resurrection, that stone will be rolled away today. Whether it's, whether it's guilt from the past, whether it's failure, whether it's a sin, whether it's a sense of, 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 of not, being, not, not being able to understand what is going on right now in your life. And the devil has tried to box you in. He's tried to secure you in into depression, secure you, you in into loneliness, Secure you in into a sense of failure. I declare today and I prophesy over your life that the resurrection power of God comes on the scene of your life and rolls away that stone, rolls away the obstacle. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Number two, verse five and six. It says there, verse five. So then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, They said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? So once the stone had been rolled away, now they come into the tomb and and the angels see them and they say, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is not here. Hallelujah. Number two, life comes out of that which is dead. He is raised. He has been brought back to life. Why, why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek life in dead places? The resurrection power of God raised Jesus from the dead. The resurrection power of God will bring life out of dead places in your life. The resurrection power of God will awake that in your life which is lying dormant. The resurrection power of God will energize you, will strengthen you. Look what it says in Acts chapter 2 verse 24. The apostle Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost and he said something powerful. He said this concerning the resurrection of Jesus. Who God has raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Now listen to that again. Who God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. The resurrection power of God came into that tomb. First, removed the stone. Then, raised Jesus from the dead, loosed the pains of death, loosed the pains of death. The resurrection power of God will loose you from the pains of death. And then it says, because it was not possible that Jesus should be held by it. Hallelujah. It was not possible that Jesus should be held by death. It was not possible. The resurrection power of God comes on the scene and makes impossibilities possible. What, is in, what, what are you up against this morning? What are you confronting? What are you deal, dealing with that you think it's an impossibility? It is dead. It is over. There's no hope. Death has held this thing. There's a grip on this thing. There's no way out. Well, the resurrection power of God can make possible what is impossible 
if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Notice that it says there that death could not hold it down. Death could not hold Jesus down. Death tried to hold Jesus down, but death could not hold Jesus down. Amen. That means that Jesus was was coming back to life and the devil was trying to keep him dead and there was this battle going on. There was this battle going on. And but eventually the the resurrection power of God, hallelujah, conquered and won over death and Jesus came out of that grave. It's like when in Genesis chapter 1 that when there was darkness over the over the face of the waters and over the face of the deep it says, in the, and the Spirit of God, which is a type of the power of God, hovered over the, over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. But John chapter 1 tells us what happened there. It says there, and light came. In John chapter 1, you can read it. Light came, and, but darkness could not comprehend it. I'm going to read that quickly in John chapter 1. Because this is what happened there in the grave. It says there, In John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Another word for that word comprehend is prevail. Darkness could not prevail against the light, which means there was a fight. There was a tussle. There There was a battle. There was a battle. When God said, let there be light, and light came, darkness had a, started to oppose light, and there was, a, there was a battle between light and darkness. But John chapter 1 tells us that darkness could not prevail, could not comprehend it, and eventually light won. In the tomb, death and life were having a battle. Death was trying to hold Jesus down. Death was trying to keep Jesus dead. But the power of resurrection triumphed and won. And Jesus rose from the dead and came back to life. Death could not keep him down. When the power of resurrection comes into your life, there will be a battle. There will be an endeavor of the enemy to try to hold you down. But if you stay in faith, if you stay believing in the power of God, the power of God will win. It's like those people that I've counseled people that they come out of drugs and they come to Jesus and then there's this battle. There's this battle. You know, there's this this battle of temptation as the enemy says, no, you're not. You're not going to live for Jesus. As the enemy says, no, you're not. You're not going to be a Christian. You're mine. And there's this battle and there's this tussle and there's, and there's this, this man or this woman endeavoring to please God, whether it's with alcohol or with drugs or, or with immorality and there's, or with guilt. And they're endeavoring to live for God. They're endeavoring to read God's Word. But there's this, there's this battle of, from the enemy trying to hold on to them, trying to bring them back to the drugs, bring them back to the alcohol, bring them back to their failure, bring them back to their old life. And it's like they're in between. the And, they, and, they, and they're walking in a real spiritual warfare, in a real battle, until, until one day they completely surrender to the power of God. And it's like God says, that's enough. The addiction is broken and the stronghold is broken and the enemy is defeated. That is so powerful. Maybe some of you right now, there's a tussle going on in your life. There's a real arm, arm wrestle. There's a real tug of war. You're trying to hold on to the promises. You're trying to hold on to your prayers. You're trying to hold on to your faith walk. You're trying to hold on to the Word of God. But there's this real battle going on. You need the power of resurrection today to come into your life, to come into your world and to say enough is enough. Death, you have to go. Death, your days are numbered. Failure, you go. Guilt, you go. Your past has to go. It's a new day. You're coming out of the grave. You're coming out of the tomb. You're coming out of that dead place. 
Your marriage is coming out. Your family is coming out. Your dreams are coming out. Your ministry is coming out of that dead place. I speak to someone right now that's in the ministry. There's a pastor that's in the ministry right now. I sense in my spirit that you're sitting there. There's a, there's a battle going on for your ministry. And you're, you're praying over it. And you, you, know, you feel like there's this real endeavor to wipe you out. And, and you're praying and you're saying, God, you called me. God, what's going on? And, 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 and there's this... There's this endeavor to to sort of want to throw in the towel and to to give up on God and to give up on the ministry and God says no no your best days are before you your ministry is coming out of this situation your ministry is coming out of this failure your ministry is coming out of this desert your ministry is coming out of the affliction and you're going to come out stronger you're going to come out more powerful and you're going to come out with greater revelation you're going to come out hallelujah knowing that God is with you. You're going to come out. The power of God comes into your room right now. The resurrection power of God comes into your ministry right now. The resurrection power of God comes into your finances right now, into your marriage. There's a marriage there that is in the tomb. Your marriage is in the tomb. And you've gone to counselors, you've gone to psychology. You've tried the 10 steps and the five steps and you've tried this and you've tried that and the, the marriage is in the tomb. There's, you, want to, you want to have a, a happy marriage and a strong marriage, but there's this battle going and the devil's trying to keep that marriage in failure, trying to keep that marriage in fighting, trying to keep that marriage unhappy. There's this real battle going on. The power of resurrection comes into that tomb and makes... A miracle happen. I speak that prophetically this morning over someone's life. There's a married couple in Jesus' name. Resurrection power comes right there where you are. And life comes into that marriage. A mother praying for her child. And it's like, it, it's over. My child is gone away from God. He's lost. You've lost all hope. What can I do, God? You've been asking, what can I do? Well, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, the same power that came into the tomb that Jesus was in and, and ripped Him out of the hands of death is the same power that can reach down to your son, that can reach down to your daughter and, and, and take them out of the claws of the enemy, take them out of the life that they're living and bring them back to God. Hallelujah. Believe. Believe that impossibilities can become possible today. This nation needs the power of God. This world needs the power of God. Everyone's running to and fro, looking for answers, looking for ways, looking for, for a method. How do we get out of this? How do we survive? How? We come back to the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the power of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. I'm not ashamed of the dunamis power of God. We need the power of God today more than ever before. And the church needs to come back to the relying, relying on the power of God. This resurrection power that the apostle Paul said, I want to get to know that power. Why seek the living among the dead? He's alive. So the power of God will bring life. And then it says there, verse 6 and 7, Remember, remember. It says they remember and they remembered. Remember, I want to say to someone, remember. There's a promise. He said, the angel said to the, to the ladies, to the women, Remember, he told you that he would, he would rise from the dead. Remember. If God has said it, He will do it. I want to say to someone right now, remember. Remember, what has God promised you? What has God prophesied to you? What has God told you? Remember. See, sometimes we just take for granted what God speaks to us. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, God promised me this. God said He'll do this. But ah, uh, remember what God has said. Remember what you've told God. 
Remember what he has said in his word. Remember. And, in, and this thing, if he's promised it, well, then there's the go ahead for him to do it. Now, if he hasn't promised it, if he hasn't said, if he hasn't said anything to you, well, then we cannot really claim what he has not promised. But if he's promised, remember. The, the, the disciples, they were living in, 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 in the house all sad and all, all depressed. Depressed with a promise. Depressed with a promise. Because they had forgotten what God had said. There are many of you that have forgotten what God has said about you, what God has said about your marriage, what God has said about your family. Then you have forgotten what God has said about your ministry, about your church. You've forgotten about what God prophesied to you 10 years ago. And you're living your life like, you know, care sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. I just, this is my part in life. No, remember what God has said. Remember. And He is not a man that He should lie. If He said it, He will do it. Remember. God promised He will perform it. How? How? The resurrection power of God. He said, I, I, can, I cannot see how that's ever going to happen. I remember what He told me. I remember what He said. I remember what He spoke. But I just cannot see how that can happen. I, I'm not talented enough. I'm not, you know, I don't have the skills. I, I, I don't have the, the mind for that. I don't have the finances for that. Hey, you've got the power of God. You've got the resurrection power of God that can make the promises of God become a reality in your life. Abraham, you're going to have a son. How? Leave it up to God. Leave it up to God. And the last thing is, when the resurrection power of God comes, verse 12 says there, and Peter departed, marveling. To himself at what had happened. When the resurrection power of God comes, there will be a marveling. You're going to marvel. You're going to be amazed. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching this this morning, not, not just to say anything cute or I'm preaching the Word of God. I want to say when the resurrection power of God comes and, 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 and rolls away the stone and brings life out of death, and, and, and fulfills what He's promised to you. You are going to marvel. You are going to walk in awe. You are going to walk in wonder. How did that happen? Peter walked out of the tomb and said, Wow! Wow! Marvel. See, we don't marvel anymore. We go to church and we don't marvel anymore. Everything's the same. We sing the same songs. We hear the same preaching. We shake the same hands and we go home to the same house. And we come back the next Sunday and we do it all over again. Everything in a box. Everything's so proper. Everything's so polished. We don't marvel anymore. Could it be that the power of God is not in the house? Something to think about. Because I remember, I remember that Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. We're going to start marveling. When the resurrection power of God comes, we're going to marvel. We're going to marvel. So the Apostle Paul said that I may know the power of His resurrection. And the Apostle Paul lived his life the power of resurrection. A marvelous, supernatural, miraculous, powerful life. On this Resurrection Sunday, I want us to cry out to God for resurrection power to come once again. Right there where you are, in your home, in your family, in our churches. As we sing this chorus, I want us to pray in this, in this direction. Lord, release the resurrection power of God over our lives today. Roll away the stone. Roll away the obstacle. Bring back to life what is dead. Let us remember what you've promised and marvel us, amaze us. Let's sing to the Lord and I'll be back. Amen. Hallelujah. Cry. 
Christ is risen from the grave, hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave, and all throughout eternity our song will be the same, hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave, oh death. from the grave now we know why because the resurrection power of God came into that grave came into that tomb and caused Jesus to come back to life but again that is not just something there for us to read that's there so that we can believe that what God did for Jesus he can do for us so today I want you to believe that whatever is dead whatever is dying Whatever is failing in your life, I want you to believe that the power of God comes on the scene and brings back to life that which is dead. I want you to believe that just the stone of obstacle has been rolled away by the power of God. I want you to believe that life can come out of death. I want you to remember what God has promised you, what God has said to us in His Word. And then I want you to get ready to marvel, to walk around and say, wow, my God is great. My God is powerful. My God can do anything. There is nothing too hard for my God. My God is all powerful. My God, wow, in wonder. Wow, what a God that I serve. Look at the miracles that He does. Look at the provision that He brings. Look how He, how he opens doors. Look what He has done. Let's believe that we're going to marvel again. We're going to, in the days to come, we shall marvel at what God will do with His church because we're going to come back to the resurrection power, to the dunamis power of God. Let's pray right now as we close this service and let's believe for resurrection power today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for resurrection power to be released over all those that are watching and listening to this message right now here live over Facebook and over Zoom and also to all those that will watch and listen later on Lord as this stays on the on Facebook Lord that as they listen to it later on they will they will be a recipients of the power of Almighty God I pray Lord that you bring to life Father, that which is dead. I pray for marriages. I pray for families. I pray, Lord, for businesses. I pray for ministries and churches. I pray for visions and dreams. Almighty God, that you've given to your people, that they would come back to life today as the resurrection power of God comes on the scene of our life. I pray for our churches that we come back to the resurrection power of God and that we would marvel once again at what you do in our churches, at what you do in our services, and at what you do in our lives, Almighty God. And for that, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And we receive this by faith today in Jesus' name. And everybody shouts amen and amen. May God bless you. And let's walk in the resurrection power of God. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Amen. Bless you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ.
Christ is risen from the grave And though throughout eternity Our song will be the same Hallelujah Christ is risen from the grave